Good morning, everybody. Pastor Josh here. Pastor Chad, good morning. Yes, we are here in the Getting Back to Normal seminar. So we are the hosts with the most. We're yeah. the hostess with the mostest. That would make us host. A, yeah, just host. Yeah, we can't be host. the host. We can't have mostest. <laughs> we can't. Uh, I am. What What was, you know, Wayne's World? What was uh, Wayne's last name? I, I honestly don't. Know. Wayne and Garth. That's Garth Algar. I know Gal- Garth Algar, but yeah, I'm not I'm, sure. I have no idea. Ah, because I was going to be Wayne. This could be my most excellent friend, Garth. Wayne's World. No, this is not Wayne's World. This is a seminar co-hosted uh, with Living Waters Fellowship and New Heart Counseling uh, on the topic of getting back to normal. Uh, we do this recording from a studio looking at a camera. Obviously, historically, this is not normal. This is not no. super normal. No, I, this will be my first Saturday morning recording a seminar in a basement. Right. Seeing myself on a screen. Right. So this um, is... Yeah. yeah, this is not a normal thing. No. Normally, our seminars are live. They have been historically. Uh, the last couple seminars have been on camera. So. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Second one on camera. So. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, we're going to just tackle um, some topics that are on your hearts and on your minds. We're going to try to tackle what's been on everybody's hearts and minds, which is what is normal? Can I get back to it? Can I find normal? Can I grab a hold of normal? Can I look forward to normal? What is normal? What's the Bible say about normal? And I think we want to handle this um, as biblically as we can. Yep. We want to have fun with it, but we definitely want to uh, handle the scriptures well. So we're standing in for Andy Biddle. I guess that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Andy studying preaching. So yeah, it'd be good. Yeah. Andy's going to preach gonna... tomorrow. Yeah. So you got big shoes to fill, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chad. Yeah. We'll, we'll do we'll do our best. I guess I do too. Yeah, yeah, we will. We'll do our best. Okay, so let's just start off the topic this way. Um, let's ask the question: uh, Why are we talking about normal? What what is the big deal about everybody wanting to get back to normal? So let's just start with that, Chad. Why yeah. are we talking about this subject, and why is everybody thinking about this right now? Yeah, well, I mean, it obviously goes back to for us in the states here in Iowa beginning of march right we were everything was fairly normal we knew there was a virus but it's okay we'll be fine maybe some people were worried a little bit but not till march probably did it really hit when we went on spring break if you had kids and they never went back to school (laughs) all right they never went back to school all right they're still on spring break it's never happened in the history of our lives that's never happened i mean and March Madness was canceled, so people like me, this was like the worst March <clears throat> of my life, all yeah. right, for that yeah. reason. But, I mean, so many things changed. I mean, we've people have things that changed their normal lives, but the, the thing that makes this unique is that this is impacting everyone. Everyone's yeah. lives were changed drastically, not just some people, not just people that got laid off of one company or different things. This drastically changed everybody's <laughs> lives, and so... Yeah. You know that it is when people are posting like pictures of sitting at restaurants. Like all of a sudden they got to sit at a restaurant. They, the picture is not of food; it's of hey, look, I'm sitting inside a restaurant. This yeah. is awesome. I'm. It's kind of normal. Granted, there's still people with masks and all this other stuff, but people want life to go back to what it was end of 2019. Yes. Beginning of 2020, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. In general, just how life was before everybody, everything changed. Yes. So, so normal is um, what we're used to, rhythms. Yeah. Um, and when those rhythms get interrupted, that's called change. Humans don't historically do very well with change. Yeah. Not yeah. normally. We don't like change. We don't normally do well with change. Um, if, if we're asked to change, we're like, how much do I have to change? And, why do I have to change? So, so things that I have heard um, as we introduce this topic is, I just want things to be how they used to be. I've heard that. Yep. And I, I, I can't we just get back to normal? And I think we've got people on opposite spectrums um, in our in our culture, where some people are just like super enthusiastic. Let's get back to normal. I can't believe we ever stopped being normal. And then we have other people who are on the opposite side of the spectrum who are, we should never really go back to normal 
And so the, we, I've yeah. seen as a pastor two really extreme reactions uh, to the coronavirus, COVID-19. And everybody's saying, well, you know, I'm looking for rhythm. I'm looking for normalcy. And then I think there's a huge swath of people that are somewhere in between uh, yeah. where people are like, yeah, it's not super comfortable, but it is what it is. And wearing masks and doing things like this are... I guess these are things we have to adjust to. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and the reason this topic came up probably now is because at least, you know, within our state and different places, things are starting to open back up. It's yeah. starting to, you know, and it's still not normal by any stretch of the imagination, not anywhere close. But, you know, when people, yeah, like you said, when people say they want it to be back to normal, they want it to be what they're used to. Yeah. My definition of normal, your definition yeah. of normal be different. But we just want it back to how we were comfortable right. with things, like when we weren't having to scavenge yeah. for toilet paper, when, <laughs> you know, you're not worried about potentially – everybody – I think everybody's fairly universal in that getting back to normal means plenty of toilet paper. I hope so. No meat shortages, <laughs> things like that. You know, people – those kind of things are fairly universal, um, that everybody's like, yeah, that – you know, no part of the new normal do I want to be – you know, toilet paper free. Yeah. I mean, like you that. start messing with our bathrooms and our bathroom routines. I mean, we are just going to start screaming. This is not okay. Yeah. Can I get a sofa? Amen out there. Yeah. So I think our bathroom, um, rhythms have been disrupted, which is not okay. And we want things to get back to normal that way. Here, here's some other things. I, I was just scavenging the internet this week, looking at all the articles on, can we get back to normal? And if you just do a simple Google search on getting back to normal, you'll find articles from the New York Times, NPR, um, Global, the London Times. I, I was reading articles from all over the world and all over our nation. Everybody's writing about this. I mean, there's editorial pieces all over the place where people are asking, what is normal and can we get back to it? Um, I saw a funny article yesterday of a German cafe that opened up and <laughs> this, this German cafe had um, hats that you had to wear. So if you go to this German cafe, you had to wear a hat. And on that, on top of that hat was one of those, uh, what are those called? The pool? Pool noodles. Pool noodles. You had to, you had to wear a pool noodle on your head. So, that, so there's like three feet in front of you, three feet behind you. And like everywhere you turn like this, like you had pool noodle <laughs> reinforcing social distancing. So I'm like, well, maybe we could use that for the church. <laughs> we could have people come to church wearing a hat with a pool noodle on it just to reinforce that you can't hug people. So I, <clears throat> I think that was kind of a funny article, but cause you read the article and, and I know for me, I read the article and I'm like, that's not normal. <laughs> that's no. not normal. And normal as how I'm used to thinking of yeah. normal with restaurants. So Yeah, and hopefully, I mean, that's <laughs> hopefully that's not the new normal. Everybody walking around with a pool, two pool noodles on their head. Yeah. The big X. It would be, uh, <laughs> be interesting. But yeah, I mean, and, and again, it's funny because when we, six months, eight months ago, if you ask people, do they really like normal? A lot of people think they don't like normal. Like right. they think, oh, I want more excitement. I want this. I want that. Right. And they don't think they want normal except for, yeah. When when we talk about normal, talking about what we're used to, you don't like it until it's gone. Right. And when it's gone, you want it. <laughs> you want it back because you don't realize how much you depend right. on yeah. not having it, to think it, about things you didn't have to think about. Yes. And isn't that the case of the human soul, right? We're yeah. always not satisfied with what we have now. We always want, well, I want something different. I, the grass is greener on the other side. So when we have normal, we don't like normal, and we want to get rid of normal. We want some spice in our life. We want some differences. Then, And then we have a pandemic that upsets everything normal, and they're like, I don't like this. I want normal again. Yeah. And it's just the, the, the disparity of, of the sinful human soul to not be satisfied, which yeah. is just the reality. We can't be satisfied no, in ourselves. No, it's in a much bigger scale now like i mean the other times i've experienced this in small scales like when we're painting our house or moving it's like oh i like yeah. when i don't have to yeah move all my furniture or i like when i don't have to worry <laughs> about it clean up all this mess right. but this is you know it's been ongoing a few months and so yeah 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 
Okay, so let's let's move on to another question, Chad. All right. What is normal anyway? Yeah. I mean, if we're going to talk about I want things back to normal, let's define our term. So yeah. what is normal anyway? I mean, normal, when we think about it, is just conforming more or less to a standard, usual, typical, it's as expected. Yeah. So like, well, that's normal. Yeah. All right, when you, you know, feed some or take some, if it's normal, it just means it's it's what you thought it would be. It just meets right at that, that very standard. Um, so, again, that doesn't mean what is normal. It's we, we have a definition, but it is still somewhat subjective. Yeah. Like, my normal is different than right, five yeah. kids. is different than somebody who's <laughs> married or somebody that's single. But yeah. Those normals are different, yeah. but we all understand what we mean when we say, I want my life to yeah. be back to normal. I want it back how... I expect it to be happening. Yes. So Chad DeClean with um, 16 million kids at his house. Isn't that what you have nowadays? Close, That's your population close. at your house? Yeah. So Chad sitting down with a 19 to 20-year-old young guy who's dating someone, and he's in college, and he's on summer break. Yeah. How many commonalities are you going to really have? Yeah, no, there's well, not a lot of normal that matches up. Yeah, so like the 19-year-old's normal and Chad's normal are two very different normals. So I think what you said that was very helpful was conformity to a rule. So like if you look up the word normal and the etymology of the word, and etymology is just a fancy word for the history of a word, um, it, it, it comes from... Um, a Latin word that means uh, to be in conformity to a rule. Um, it literally means normal. It means according to a pattern. So it literally means like a carpenter square. So I don't know if you can see this, but if you're a con gifted construction person like myself or Chad, um, you would use a construction square to help you measure something. Like uh, if you're going to cut wood or if you were going to, um, maybe maybe try to find the right angle, and you want to make sure things are square. You're going to put one of these bad boys on a piece of wood, and then you're going to mark it with a pencil of some sort, and then you're going to know that this is exactly square for the project that you're doing. That Basically, it means you're in conformity to what is a standard, right? So... Um, I need these things in my life. These are good. These are good things not only have in the construction world, but in your life. You need to know what is conformed to God's rules and, and even just the normal patterns of what you can expect in life. So it's a really interesting word. I mean, normal. Yeah. This is a really interesting word to study because it does have this idea of conforming to a standard. Yeah. Conforming to a standard being, you know. And we probably have gone through stages so, yeah. of wanting to be normal. And then yes. you go through your stage of, I don't want to be normal. I want to stick out. And yeah. So, I mean, it just ebbs and flows. But, yes, we all have a good understanding yeah. of what we mean. So what's normal in our in our culture, like in America? What's you know what's pretty standard? What's, what's conforming to the standard in some general ways? And then I want to get to the nation of Israel because you have some thoughts on Israel. Yeah, well, no, I mean, just <clears throat> normal, you know. I mean, it just depends. But I mean, for the most people, normal having a job, having an income, yep, house, car, yep, potentially yep. family or friends, yep. things like that. And I guess often what what gets mixed up is like when we think of normal, we also think of what makes us comfortable. And yes. Kinda, yes. Because we find comfort in what is what we yeah. can, what we can depend upon. Yeah. What we think is is yes. Good. So. So basically, again, we're still cultural. We're going to move biblical here in a little bit, in a minute. But culturally, like there, there's kind of two nuances, two levels to normal, right? And Chad, Chad mentioned that the first kind of level of normalcy is just fitting in. Like everybody wants to fit in. Nobody wants to stick out. Nobody wants to be nonconformist for the most part. I mean, there are some people, I guess, that just want to do the opposite of what everybody else does. But for the most part. You know, people want to have a salary. People want to make money. People want to have a house. People want to have an apartment. People want to have a car. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's all these conformity things that everybody's like, I need to have this in my life to be normal. I need to wear clothes that are 
acceptable to whatever the standards are of that culture. And I want to be normal. I don't want to stick out. And so um, if anybody has read the Lord of the Rings series, um, if you've read those um, and if you've read The Hobbit, you know, you would know that Bilbo Baggins says that, uh, you know, he never was meant to have any adventures, you know, like when Gandalf shows up to his house and says, hey, we need to go do this adventure. And Bilbo's like, no, I mean, Baggins is and, and, and we don't do adventure. We don't have adventures. And I think that's the idea of normal. Like Bilbo just wanted to live a normal life. And that's that's really a, a microcosm of, of how we all are is we want to live a pretty normal life. So that's the that's the one standard. We don't want to stick out. And then the second level that you talked about is we want comfort. You know, we, we do want our dishwashers to work. We want our ovens to work. We want to have a comfortable bed. We desire to have nice couches. We desire to, ref, yeah. you know, put new flooring in our house so that it's nicer and it's more appealing. So there is a comfort level. Um, people want haircuts. Can I get a sofa? Amen. People like having their hair in a comfortable, you know, style for them. So there's a comfort side of that too. Yeah. Yeah. And people, I mean, we're comfortable or we may desire like small periods of excitement but normally when that's happening what you're looking forward to is getting back to when it's not like that <laughs> yes. like that's a that's a comfort yes. to you like yes this is kind of fun right now and i'm fine yes. with it as long as it's a week or as long as it's two weeks but i'm i'm what i'm looking forward to is when i don't have to worry about that anymore this will be fun and it'll be good stories when we talk about later but we'll get back yes to what's normal and we look forward to that and so yeah this is why it's been so weird for people is because we don't know yeah. will there be a normal will it come back how much will it change when yes. and yeah yes. we're still waiting on things right we i have kids that are in potential summer sports and still maybe. don't know maybe maybe, maybe not. not and you're like i just <laughs> kind of want to know yeah because we can but yeah it's just part of that that waiting yes and jerry seinfeld the comedian he he has a he has a new comedy routine on Netflix and he he talks about what you just said that's why i was laughing so loud cuz he just said this as part of his comedy routine he's like you know we just we want to get out you know i i don't want to stay at home i want to get out and you go and you get out and then when you get out you're like i got to get home i got to get home and like there's this constant we like excitement but we like it on our terms we like trips and vacations but we like them in small doses we like certain friends who are really exciting and fun and ex amazing people we we like them in small doses because we can't take too much of them or else they'll overwhelm us you know like it's yeah. just we like normal we like rhythm we like comfort but we like our adventure kind of packaged the way we want it to be so yeah the the covid-19 is one big packaged adventure that we didn't create and we don't know when it ends either yeah. which which makes us very unsettled so it does yeah Okay, so talk to us about Israel. You had yeah. some thoughts about Israel that I thought were really good. Yeah, so we were talking about, again, when we're talking about normal and the things that we're used to, we can grow very, so the, the maybe potential negative to downside to normal is when we get too used to what we're doing and we just grow comfortable and dependent upon that. And so, you know, just thinking through like another whole people group that was radically and, you know, impacted and had their lives turned upside down you think back to moses leading the people of israel out of egypt they had been slaves their life was not good by any means they had to make bricks right and so i mean right i don't know many people who like man just love a life of making bricks all right and that's all they had to do but while it wasn't fantastic it was a known thing i'm, I'm gonna get up it this was, morning i'm gonna make bricks yes. and i'm gonna go back and I'd be part of my family. Now, there was rough parts. I mean, obviously, Pharaoh was trying to say, hey, you need to kill all your infant-born baby boys because you have too many and all these mm -hmm. things. And he was, a, and then, you know, after Moses showed up, they inflicted even harder and harsher rules, making them get all their own stuff to make the bricks and things like that. But that was their life. They were slaves. That's mm -hmm. all they knew. And so they were doing those things. And while they didn't have an abundance, they had enough. Mm -hmm. And so they were excited to leave right? right i mean they weren't they right. weren't like fighting leaving i mean who it's like yeah i could be free we'll be our own country we can do it you know we don't have to listen to pharaoh it's going to be amazing we're going to leave and so they left 
and God, as we know, like you read through Exodus 14, they come up to the Red Sea, and all of a sudden they're faced with their first major conflict of yeah. what is going to happen. We were, life used to be normal. It wasn't great, but it was normal. I could do it. Right. Now, all of a sudden we have an army coming to kill us. And if you read through Exodus 14, I mean, they start off well when they see it. It says, as Pharaoh approached, Exodus 14, 10, the Israelites looked up, saw the Egyptians coming after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord for help. Mm. And it would be great, like, if that was, uh, <laughs> like, yes, that is what you should do. Because so you can read that, that is, yeah. your, that should be your response. The next part is where they kind of let their cynicism, their sin, everything else take over. Because then they said, so they said to Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you took us out here to die in the wilderness? What have you done by bringing us out? Isn't this what we told you? Leave us alone so that we can serve the Egyptians. It would be better to be a slave to the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Yeah. So then all of a sudden their heart was revealed. They were like, ah, you know what? It was so much easier being a slave. We didn't have to run from the army. We didn't, we didn't have a sea in front of us. Yep. And so it, they loved their comfort and they were scared having to walk each day trusting. Because it would, all right, now yeah. that I have a family, five kids. Oh, man. You know? Not knowing where you're going each day. Are we going to be camping out here for two days, a, a month, yeah. one day? Now we have to pick everything up and go. That would be difficult, but it is what God had called them to. And, and so it just it reveals our hearts when normalcy is taken away, too. Yes. Um, you know, yes. and they it didn't take long, and then God provided. They were yeah. rescued. Yes. But then next, you they, know, two chapters later, they were complaining again. They're like, well, we had pots full of meat in Egypt yeah. in Exodus 16. Yeah. And now we don't. I would rather go back and be a slave yep. and have what I'm comfortable with than to follow God and what yes. he wants. Yeah, dude, that's a great illustration. So several talking points. You know, one is that Israel wanted, I mean, they would rather be in slavery because it was a known slavery. It was at least known. You knew what your schedule would be. You knew uh, basically the expectations of what what was going to happen to you uh but it was slavery freedom is more difficult because in some ways because you're you're going yeah now you don't have egyptian sli soldiers over you but you do have your kids complaining a lot about all the walking and you've got families and tribes all murmuring and complaining and this is terrible and moses doesn't know what he's doing and like I mean, like every leader, you know, has been through that before where it's like, where are you taking us? Why are we going this way? This is terrible. You're the worst. And I think that that's, that's part and parcel of like the unknown walking by faith, um, and being, you know, getting used to, a uh, a new normal. That's hard. That's a hard thing. So there's just a lot of things to really see parallels in, you know, Israel's story getting out of Egypt with our story of, you know, we have a pandemic and uh, just take a stroll through social media and you'll see like, oh my goodness, like tons of people are complaining. Tons of people are super negative about everything. Some people are really positive and they're walking by faith. And then there's just, there's just a whole host of reactions, but it basically has just been a revealer of what's in your heart, which is what we talk about all the time in our counseling ministry is whatever's in your heart is going to come out. Circumstances just kind of help bring the heart out. Yeah. 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 So whatever we're used to normal being when God upsets the apple cart of our normal expectations, mm -hmm. whatever's in your heart spills out. And, and most, let's be honest, if, if you're a person like me or Chad, you're a sinner. So Whatever's in your heart's going to come out, and it's not always pretty. Can I get a so of amen? It's not always pretty. No. What's inside of you and me uh, when things come and upset what we think is normal? Yeah, and I mean, just like spiritually speaking, sometimes we talk about this. We talk about the Israelites, and we're like, man, so how how could you want to go back to slavery? That's ridiculous. Right. But if you're honest with yourself, how many times have you, once you've decided to follow Christ, be like, there were so many ways my life was easier before I made the decision to do that. Like, yeah. why do I have to be convicted about this? Or why do I have to feel the need to follow this? And yeah. when we focus on those things, it can, we get the wrong, you know, the wrong. Mm -hmm. And so we are much like the Israelites. We're not in any shape better heart-wise because we were all humans. We were all sinners. Yeah. 
Yep. And just as we have looked back and said, oh, man, I wish sometimes, you know, we look back, wish oh, it would be easier to go back to when I didn't have to worry about doing all these yeah. things. It's because we're trusting in ourselves and looking to our own comfort as opposed to right. those things. Right. So, yeah, it's good. That's good. So uh, let's let's go to the next question. So all right. is God normal? Is God normal? <clears throat> that's, kind a, of a, that's a good question, right? Yeah. Loaded. No, no. I mean, God is, it depends on what you mean. Is God constant? Yes. God is always constant. He okay. never changes. And so in that, by conforming to a standard, God is normal. If that's, I guess if that, you know, because he yeah, never that's... changes. He never lies. He doesn't, he is the standard and he will never change from that. And so in that way, he's normal. But would we think of God as normal? No, because he's so far beyond anything yeah. we can know or change. That, so, you know, and and so he is far beyond anything that we would ever. I would never describe God as normal. Yeah, I th- I think a lot of people have that question in their heart and mind, in the quietness of their own heart. They may never verbalize it, but they might say, "Is God normal?" Because like, if he is consistent in his character, faithful, just, righteous, compassionate loving if he's all these things then is he normal or not like because he's bringing something very abnormal to his creation so does that violate his character or is he completely consistent in his character while he is bringing abnormal things to his creation so i think a lot of people have a hard time with holiness consistency is god the same as he's always been, or is this a, is this a new God bringing a new thing to us that shows us that he is inconsistent? I think people, I, I mean, I know people are thinking that. Yeah. So here, yeah. here here's just a couple things you answered re- really well. Um, yeah. Do you want to keep going? I'm sorry. I don't want to. No, I off. mean, if we're, or I don't know where we're going to go next, but yeah, I mean, just those things like, is God constant? Yeah. I and mean, he is constant it is always even as we studied through hebrews it's always about faith like when we yeah. reference back to abraham and when we reference back to these people even when you're going through hebrews it's always been about faith and the faith has always been constant to be in yes. god and god's provision so how we experience it and what we're going through will change but god does not change he will never yeah. leave you know and then hebrews 13 he will never leave us or forsake yeah. us he will always there we go. There we go. be there it's just our perception sometimes of it changes. And so like, as we thought, you know, thinking through like even somebody like Paul, yeah, his life was up and down, like crazy, crazy. And, and just another, well, maybe we'll get to a different time, but yes, his, his life was up and down like crazy, but the constant that he had was his faith in God once he yeah. was saved. And so like Philippians four and then, you know, the, the verse that, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens yeah. me that gets right. pulled out of context so many times before yes. every major sporting event. It means we're going to win our game until we don't. Um, you know, it just we can because we can do all things. Tim yeah. Tebow. And it's not bad. It's not Four bad. It's 413 can, under his eyes. And uh, yeah. it's pr- but what Paul was talking about right before that is he says, if you read the verses preceding that, it's like I've learned to be content with much. I've learned to be content with yeah. nothing. Yeah. And all these things, I can do all these things through Christ who strengthens me, re- m- meaning that his circumstances mm-hmm. did not dictate yes. his confidence in yes. God. And yes. so when he had a lot, he was still confident in God and trusting him. When yeah. he had nothing, he was still confident in God and trusting him. And so he was viewing his circumstances through God as opposed to what we often like to do and look at God through our circumstances and be like, why did you change? Yeah. Because now my life's horrible. He didn't change. Right. He put something in to test us, to move us. Mm-hmm. And it's how we choose to respond. And that's why Paul could say, I can do all these things because Christ strengthens me right. and enables me. Right. So, so I want to give anybody who's watching this, I want to give you permission to wrestle with God. I mean, mm-hmm. it's good for you to wrestle with the Lord regarding what seem to be contradictory evidence of things that going on in your life. And I want you to feel free to wrestle with the Lord, um, not in a difficult, unbelieving way, but in, in a way that says, Lord, I, I mean, I want to know what's happening. Soft hearted, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's good. Here's what COVID-19 and all these things kind of tell us about God. Is he normal? 
No, no, God's not normal. Uh, reminds me of the Chronicles of Narnia, that story by C.S. Lewis where uh, Aslan, who is the Jesus figure, he's the lion. He is now in the midst of of the land and he's going to, you know, there's a rumor about him that he's here and there's everybody's excited who believes in Aslan, the lion. And so the kids, the family um, that they're, they're there with the beavers and they're like, Hey, who's Aslan and what's this all about? And, and, uh, I, and one of the daughters, she said, well, is Aslan safe? Is he, is he a safe lion? And uh, Mr. Beaver said safe. No, I mean, he is not safe at all, but he is good. And I think that was a really good summary of, of Jesus's character anyway. He's not safe. He's not normal, but he's good. And here, here's the reality of what the scriptures would say. The scriptures would say that God is full of glory, like infinite glory and holiness. So Isaiah 6, Isaiah 42, they, they point us to the reality that God is not a safe God. I mean, to be in his presence is not safe because he is without limits. He has no body. I was trying to explain this to my daughters the other night, that God has no body. He is spirit. Okay? So he doesn't have a body like we have. We will be petrified in the presence of God. We'll be scared because he's He's not safe. God is, God is infinitely glorious. He does whatever he pleases. That's what Psalm 115 verse 3 says. And then um, he he is at rest. God is always at rest and at peace with who he is, no matter what's happening on the earth. And that's uh, evidenced in Psalm 29 verse 10, where it says that God was enthroned at the flood and God is in control forevermore. So as the flood, which is the the worst and craziest event that has ever happened on this earth, God was sitting on his throne in heaven completely in control as chaos reigned on the earth. That's a really good promise to know. So God is not normal in that sense, but he is normal in the sense that he gives really good order to space and time. So God does give normal rhythms like he rested on the seventh day. Uh, God gives really good order to the solar system and to the created order of things. He's at work in the world in very normal patterns of ways, summer, fall, winter, spring, the seasons, how things grow. I mean, there's so many beautiful evidences that God does value normal. He does value rhythm. He values that because that's how he created the world to be. So it's, it's kind of a double answer, you know, of is God normal? Well, no, he's glorious, but yet he does value rhythm. He does value normal rhythm, which is beautiful. Yeah. So no, he does. And he's, you know, he is the, this, you know, he is the standard that we can go to for absolute truth yeah. and giving us his word so that we can rest and trust in that. And it is just the the paradox or the paradox in our mind, thinking back, I mean, yes, God is glorious and then yet he loved us enough to send yeah. his son and just so yeah, I mean it's it's amazing because in Hebrews I think you have it's a fearful thing or no, Christy, you have a fearful thing to fall into the hands Hebrews. of the living God and Hebrews talks about and then, you know, talks about God being a consumer of fire, but it also in Hebrews says we can go boldly before confidence because of what Jesus has accomplished because we have this high priest. And so God mm-hmm. is both and we cannot yeah. take him for granted, Yes, but because of what Jesus did, we can also approach him and it's, it's just, yeah, it's just a constant it's trying amazing. to wrestle, not wrestle, but I mean, think through, yeah, in your mind, wrestle through in your mind and, yeah. and it's a good thought to wrestle through because that's, that's a sign of God's love. Mm-hmm. For us is that he pushes, if he loves you, and that's in Hebrews 2, and, you know, I think Hebrews 13, we're talking about chastening those who he loves. Yeah. If he loves you, he will not let you settle. Yeah. He will continue to push. And sometimes you're like, stop, I'm tired of dealing with this. Yes. But it's because I want better for you. You yes. need to follow me. You need to trust yes. me. And so he does that. Yes. Jesus did that. He didn't just tick off the Pharisees because he yes. liked to make people mad and it was just kind of fun. 
he kept pushing on the Sabbath. He kept doing things on the Sabbath because they needed to realize the idolatry of what yeah. they'd made out of the Sabbath because God made the Sabbath, like right. you said, for a very good purpose, the normal rhythms of life. We were created to work and we were created to rest and glorify in him mm-hmm. and exalt in him. Yes. But they had turned it into something completely different. So he purposely pushed those buttons and it would either cause them to fully reject or say, yeah. I need to evaluate my heart and I'm going to turn. Not because yep. they liked conflict, but because yep. they had to deal with that issue. Right. And so Sabbath rest, God rests on the seventh day, not because God needs to rest. No. God rests on the Sabbath day so that there are normal patterns of rhythm for humans, Adam and Eve and all human creation, is that we rest. And when we rest, what are we acknowledging? That we're not God. Yeah. You know, that we don't have the power, we don't have the strength, we don't have the infinite capacity to run the world. We need to sleep. We need to rest. We need to let the ground rest. We need to let our society rest. And I I think one of the things that God is doing, one of the many things God is doing, is God is is forcing us into Sabbath. We have to rest. We don't have any other option but to rest. And our culture was getting so busy that there was no Sabbath, really, in our culture. We were just one day to the next, to the next, to the next, and they all blur together, and we're super active, and we're really busy, and we have little badges of honor of how busy we are. And I think it, it goes fundamentally against how God created the the order of creation yeah. to rest and to glorify him and to say, I'm not God. God is God. So yeah. the Sabbath rest is a big deal. Yeah, and I mean, it was throughout, right? I mean, you had the, throughout when he gave Israel the land, he said, every seventh year, let your fields yep. rest. Yep. Every 50th year is the year of Jubilee. Yeah. You know, everything rest. Dude, you wouldn't know? it be amazing if like every farmer on the earth like adopted the Bible yeah. as the standard yeah. the to let, yeah. yes, to let the the fields rest every seven years. I mean, I know economically it'd be kind of crazy, but it would be probably yeah. really really good for our land and really good for you know like all the yeah. farmers i don't know if they're even on social media but they might be if they, if did, they were they'd be like nope right nope now. nope nope we're not nope. shutting down the fields nope nope they're, nope, they're nope, nope. The people right need now. to eat so i get it but i i think like in a, in the in the idealistic part of my brain i'm like wouldn't that be amazing if we just did what god said on on how to treat the land that'd be amazing yeah so be interesting um, another thing that just to think about, I think one of the major mistakes of humankind is to believe that we can somehow control God. We can somehow manipulate him, control him, be above him, tell him what he needs to do. I think it's one of the major mistakes of human pride and one of the major mistakes of the souls of people is to say, God, you owe me this. You need to do this for me. You need to yeah. give me what I want. You need to give me what normal is. You need to give me what my I think I should have for normal. And when we do that, we set ourselves up for huge failure because we are trying to dictate to the one who exists above and beyond anything that we could ever imagine. And he sees everything. And um, I think it's a huge mistake. Job is is my Bible passage that I would go to for defense where Job righteous guy, he gets obviously everything taken from him and then he gets his health taken from him. And at the first chapter, Job chapter one and chapter two, you're like, Oh, this guy's doing great. You know, he's, he's responding with faith. He's saying, man, you know, God, I'm not going to sin with my lips. God is faithful. He's never done anything bad to me. But if you continue to read the book of Job, he, Job gets a little out of, bent out of shape, you know, in chapter 20, chapter 30. So by the end, Job is like, God, you did kind of give me a raw deal. You gave me a raw deal, man. I I just feel like I am being treated poorly according to, you know, how I lived. I lived righteously and I'm getting all these trials and, and God shows up in Job 42 and just is like, dude, you think you're, you think you're righteous? Um, how many times did you set the oceans, you know, standard for how far the waves could come in. Tell, tell me how you would run the universe for a day, Job. Tell me if you understand how, 
<laughs> you know, how all these things work. How about you tell me all these things? So God starts pressing in on Job at the end of the book. And he just, and he just gives Job all these questions about infinite mystery. And he says, how about you answer all those things? And Job's like, I have no answers. I have no answers. I, I can't say anything. So at the end, like in modern day terms, I've heard that it would be like, it would be like God coming to us and saying, Hey, explain gravity, go, you know, explain uh, molecular biology, go, you know, and just like, okay, what if you had control over those things? How would you handle it? And we would have no answers because it's so beyond our capacity to understand. And that's where God exists. Like every moment of every day, way outside of our capacity. And yet we, as humans, I think it's a huge mistake. Every time we're like, God, you need to do this. God, you need to do that. God, you need to give me this. God, you need. And I'm just like, that's not who God is. He, he is above. He gives us rhythms because he's a gracious God. But yeah. we, we shouldn't dictate to him. What do you think? Yeah, no, it, it is a big, a big thing. It's easy to fall into. And, you know, like saying, hey, I read my Bible. I prayed. I did what I was supposed to. Now everything should go exactly how I want. And we get confused sometimes because God does bless obedience. God does right. reward obedience, which is good. Just like we, as a parent, I often reward kids for doing what is right. Right. But the the problem is, right, if you've been a parent, you've done this. So, hey, they did something, like, out of the normal, or they took initiative and did something. And you're like, oh, right. that was amazing. I'm going to, you know, we're going to get some ice cream or do something cool. Yeah. And you do it. And then the next time they're like, well, hey, I did that. Where's, where's the ice cream? <laughs> right. 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 And we're like, what do you mean? That was just a special thing. I just wanted to reward you. And, yeah. but in the same sense, that's what we do to God all the time. Like, yeah. remember that one time you gave me, blessed, brought this in when I needed it. Yeah. Wh- where is it? I, I just did the same thing. I just prayed the same prayer, yep. read the same Bible passage. You need to do the exact same thing. We yep. want to turn it into. Yep. A formula, and that is just hardwired in our brain, just like yep. reading through the Old Testament. thing that comes to mind is is the Ark of the Covenant. And, right, Israel was struggling when, when Eli was priest. Yep. Samuel was young. Yep. And they're like, you know what, we'll have, what will what we'll win this battle for us. We'll bring the Ark of the Covenant mm-hmm. and we'll destroy the Philistines. No trust in God, complete trust in, in the Ark. In the Ark, yeah. thinking we can control God's blessing by bringing this very important item into battle and then God will be forced to, yep. and it, and God's like, no, yeah. sorry. Right. And then they were routed and the ark ended up in the Philistines. So not to go too long, but yeah, their trust was in the wrong yeah, place. And they, we do that too often. Yes. Yes. They were trusting the ark. So, so let's, let's, let's move forward here and let's say, uh, what was normal in the Bible. So you've already mentioned Israel coming out of Egypt. You just mentioned Eli and his kids yeah. as high priests. Uh, we've mentioned Job and yeah. maybe just talk, let's talk about maybe a couple other Bible characters that we should highlight. We should highlight what normal looked like for them because, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, right. So when we look at the Bible and we read through it, yeah. when we think through it, the Bible is... Really, really a record of all of the not normal for the most part. Yes. Right. I mean, we don't, nobody looks at the Bible and be like, oh, you know, my favorite story. Remember those 364 days Noah was on the ark that we don't know anything about. Right. No, we don't. We talk about the flood. We talk about getting on the ark and getting off. Yes. All right. We don't talk about, right. David was king for 40 years. We don't talk about like, I wonder what like 39 of those years were like when we don't know anything about <laughs> yeah. what happened when he was king. Right. I like David right. and Goliath. I like yeah, there's when he a- destroyed all these people. I'm, I like, we yeah. all like the exciting stuff. We don't watch right. movies about normal. We don't watch yeah. shows normally about normal. And that's a thing. There, there watch, is a lot of... Watch Chad brush his teeth on Thursday. Yes. We're going to have a live feed of that. Hopefully the pandemic <laughs> ends soon because that's point we're getting yeah. sometimes but yeah. sometimes we miss that in the bible yeah. there there is a lot of normal in the bible we just read over it right i mean we like we we went through abraham right i mean abraham 25 years in between but there's 13 years from right ishmael to could we say Isaac. could we say that we overlook yeah the the passage of time yeah we overlook it because we jump story five story. verses in genesis 6 covers 120 years of noah building yeah. a boat 
That's 120 <laughs> years. 120 years. Okay. Every day building a okay. boat. 120 years. So that's how years. long it would take Josh and I to build a boat. Oh my goodness. Right now. Oh my goodness. We and just a small boat to fit on Easter Lake. Yeah. So 100, 120 years. 120 years times 365 days is 43,800 days of somebody's life. Yeah. Encapsulized in about six verses. Yeah, and we just <laughs> over this is six, and we're like, oh, forty three thousand eight hundred days. Okay, moving yeah. on, and yeah. I think that's a huge that's a huge uh, overlook from us as Christians as we read our Bibles. We just we forget about all the common moments. Yeah, all those things. The whole yeah. year they spent in the ark, where we don't know anything yeah. about the uh, Abraham from when he was promised, from when mm-hmm. you know that's like a jump of verse from Ishmael to Isaac, like. 13 years all of a sudden he's 13 mm-hmm. years old so that was 13 years of abraham doing stuff we don't know anything about right. living every correct s- everyday life and all of those things paul right when we think about paul we think about his conversion we think about his missionary journeys yes there's correct galatians you read the galatians i think galatians 1 2 his testimony there's 13 years from when he was saved I mean, he spent three years in the wilderness mm-hmm. by him. Nobody knows about that time. Yeah, nobody knows. I mean, obviously a lot of theory, speculation. Was he like Jesus ministering to him there, like learning, yeah. grow? Who knows what we don't know. And if God wanted us to know, he would have clearly recorded it. So we don't know. But that, I mean, that, that. so I think what the importance that we need to remember is so what does God call us to do in normal everyday life? Because I would say what took place in those normal times allowed these people mm-hmm. to accomplish what they accomplished in the abnormal yeah when the huge events show up yeah because so much passage of time between like you know we you go and you read about abraham you read about mm-hmm. moses you read about all these people or noah even before them there was a lot of time even in between all those people yes. things we don't know about god right. didn't disappear during those times he was there right and so i think an important thing to consider for us is what what does God ask us to do during the normal mm-hmm. times to allow us to handle yeah. Yeah, when absolutely. it's not normal? And that's a lot of times depends on how how we deal with it yes. and how we handle it. Yes. And if you're a professing Christian, your spiritual disciplines are so crucial. Mm-hmm. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Like, what are you doing in the mornings? What are you doing at night before you go to bed? If if you're on your phone, like first thing in the morning, like you're 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 waking up and it's just like groggy, but you're gonna check out Twitter, you're gonna check out Facebook, you're gonna do all that stuff. You're setting a pattern spiritually for your normal everyday experience. If at night, you, you know you have this in your bed, which you know is not always the best idea, but you're 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 watching a Netflix thing or you're binging a, a show. Like those are all normal decisions that we make Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I don't want to be legalistic about it, but I do. I do want to say that, like how we handle the normal spiritual disciplines of prayer, Bible reading, mm-hmm. serving other people, loving other people, thinking of others, doing things actively with our minds, um, that will come out in a crisis. In a crisis, you won't be anybody different than you are normally, except in a crisis. Who you are is magnified. It's bigger. Like it's 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 more on display. And if yeah. you, you know, you're like the athlete who maybe hasn't worked out the entire art off season, but you're like, I'll be fine. Nobody knows. And then you show up to the first practice or two, and you puke your guts out at every practice because you're like, oh, I didn't I didn't do any conditioning in the off season. And I, and I think that's a, a reality of our minds and our hearts as Christians. If we profess Jesus, uh, whatever we're doing in, in our disciplines, our, our quiet, normal moments, those will come out yeah. or they'll be magnified in, in a crisis. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I and mean, we go through that. I mean, coaching kids always they talk, trying to remind them, hey, if you don't practice, yeah, not going to happen in the game. There's yeah. no, you know, no special, there's no substitute yes. for putting in work and so just even jumping back to the the example of the israelites right at the end when moses is getting them ready to finally go into the promised land after their 40 years of hanging out and yeah. walking around and doing again the passage of normal like when he gets there in deuteronomy 6 he says listen israel in verse 4 
the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Mm -hmm. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and with all your strength. These words that I am giving you today are to be in your heart. Mm -hmm. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Bind them as a sign on your hand and let them be as a symbol on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and your gates. It just... So there is no substitute, like you said, to, right. to God's word, the disciplines. Yep. And, and there's aren't like, you know, you're like, oh, yes, yeah, the same things over and over. Read your Bible, pray. It's because that there's just, you can't substitute those things out. It's, you know, right. it's just like you can't substitute out. If you play basketball, you can't substitute out practicing ball handling and shooting. Mm-hmm. You can't, sure. you can't just randomly show up and be amazing at those things. You need to. Yeah. And so you can't randomly show up and be David versus Goliath or be some kind of hero if you're not already... Yeah disciplined in right. doing those things so that is part of the normal that the bible would prescribe for yeah. us as to yeah that. yeah so so it's just a it's a call to you know if you look at like job joseph moses elijah isaiah yeah. jeremiah jonah john the baptist jesus everybody in scripture that has real stories ruth naomi esther yeah. i mean you look at mary magdalene mary mother of jesus you look at all these people god god led them to very normal experiences, but then he called them at specific moments in time to very extraordinary trials, tribulations, difficulties. And, and those individuals based on the grace of God in their own life, God's grace and his love and his compassion working in and through them through spiritual disciplines, they were either ready or not ready. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I think that's, uh, you can look at the cross real quick and, you know, look at, at, at Judas and Peter, you know, two guys that both denied Christ. Judas, after he denied Jesus and sold him for the silver, you know, he went and hung himself. It's not, yeah. it's not a great finish, right? And then you have Peter, the apostle Peter, who re- repents, gets restored, gets right, and becomes the apostle of the early church. And yeah. again, it's just, those are crucial moments and God brings us to those. So COVID-19, the pandemic that we're in right now, this is a crucial moment for hundreds of millions of people um, regarding what they're going to do with their soul, how they're going to adjust to a new normal. So anyway, let's, let's keep moving. Cause we got to We got to get this thing closed up. Um, what does Jesus say normal is? What does Jesus say? Hmm. You know, what would Jesus yeah. say normal is? And what, what does the gospel say that normal is? Yeah, well, I mean, I think, right, Jesus came to this earth in obedience to the Father's will, but to give us an example of what it looked like, of what, and now, I mean, not like, is Jesus' life normal? I mean, no. Not normal. <laughs> no. So not like, we're not, we none of us have been called to save the world, none of us have been called to do that but he did come to give us an example of how to live and what did jesus prioritize i mean right i was reading through luke 22 after the last supper it says in luke 22 it says he left and went to gethsemane as was his habit yeah to pray to pray right and and that was convicting to me because jesus the son of god and if you read luke 5 it says again he went as he often did out to the wilderness to pray. So that was a, that was a pattern. Why did he do that? Because he's one, because he knew the necessity of it. And two, because he's also giving us an example of what right. we need to do. The gospel calls us to right. pray and depend upon yeah. God to realize we can't do it on our own. We need to pray. He spent time reading and sharing God's word. He taught God's word with authority because dude, he knew God's word. Well, yes. he, he inspired it. He wrote it. So yes. he knew it, but you can't teach authority with things you don't know right. and so right those are the things that it, they call us to is to be the baseline then that that allows you to do other things as we're yep. going to see through hebrews like hebrews 11 what was yeah. enabled those people to do the amazing things that god called them to it was walking by faith which was trusting in god believing mm-hmm. he is who he says he is yeah. and the only way you get to do that is by knowing him through his word and prayer and obedience. Yeah. And, yes. you know, you read through Hebrews 11, we like to focus on all the good people, all the things that are amazing, the people that, you know, defeated armies, yep. killed lions. And then you get to the part where then it switches halfway through the verse and you're like, and mm-hmm. the people who got imprisoned and sawn yes. in half and yes. tortured. Like, oh, the trials. I don't, yes. That's not, 
the part I wanted to be, you yeah. know. But, yeah. but I mean, throughout it, God calls us to yeah. whatever it looks like. Yep. Rest, trust, walk after him. Yes. This is amazing. That's a really good answer. Um, Jesus is not normal in, in any way, shape, or form. He's so abnormal because yeah. he, he is the son of God. He dies on a cross. He resurrects from the dead. He lives this life that is just different, right? He, he's with people all the time. He prioritizes prayer. He, he does miracles. He teaches mm-hmm. thousands of people. And, and then he's willing to give it all up so he can go die on a cross. This is abnormal. But if you look at, if you look at Jesus as well, he also is very normal in that he works a job swinging a hammer on a construction site for 30 years. I mean, that's just what he does. So Jesus, even in his life, he is so beautifully perfect. He's a guy that has understood normality. He understands rhythm. He understands being faithful to a job. He understands Mm -hmm. all those things. And then he also has the abnormality of his three-year ministry, which is just crazy. And then a death on a cross and a resurrection. All the all the while focused completely on his mission, which is to glorify God and to fulfill God's purpose to save humanity. Now, don't divorce the Bible from real life, because in real life, Jesus had to deal with a tower falling on a bunch of people. There's all these crazy circumstances happening. People are dying. People have cancer. People have sicknesses. Jesus is in the midst of a crazy world, just like we are right now. And yet his focus is completely on glorifying God. And I think that's what the gospel says to us about normal is that a lot of parts of our lives will be very normal. They will be. We just need to embrace Wednesday. We need to embrace Thursday for what it is. We need to embrace the everyday stuff. But in the midst of that, God will call us as, as believers in Jesus Christ, he will call us to focus in on the gospel. All right. So the resurrection of the dead, Jesus Christ conquering people's hearts through faith, uh, leading people to salvation, leading people to growth in Christ. Believers are supposed to be focused in on the glory of God and the good news that Jesus came to die on the cross and rise again. That's the main focus of Christians. Now, Christians have been focused on that purpose for thousands of years. Um, In the middle of wars, famines, peace, prosperity, social revolution, ages of discovery and science and the development of technology, all of that stuff that has happened over the last 2,000 years, that stuff's not going to change. The focus of Christianity is always on the glory of God and the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ came to die for sinners like you and me. That is normal. That's the normal focus of a Christian. Everything else is free game. We could have COVID-19. We could have some other crisis. We could be in a season of prosperity. We could be in a season of revolution. We could be in a season of all different kinds of things, but that's not the main issue of Christianity. The main issue of Christianity is that our minds and our hearts are focused on Christ and the good news that, that Jesus can save people. So, yeah. 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 No, it, as we think through this, I mean, as we, uh, you know, as we're going through it, just so just like even practically thinking through, you know, normal and what it is and we're, our desire to get back to it, um, just questions I've been thinking through too. Yeah. What is, you know, because we... Um, what is good about normal? Yeah. And what is potentially a snare good about question. normal? Because, right, if we're honest, well, there are things we've had to cut out. Some things potentially should stay cut out. Some things are yes. good to add back in. So, like, getting together as a church should not stay cut out. Lord willing, that's Amen. getting yeah, added We back should get in. back together. But other things that we used our time, because we had this time, because we had a whole bunch, that we used our time for, maybe those things should stay cut out. And, you know, um, there should be a new normal that we can get Mm -hmm. to that could be beneficial. So, you know, like thinking through what is, you know, what's something I had to cut out that I should keep cut out. What's something I've had to add that I should keep added. You know, there are potential things you added that you should get ripped, get back rid of because you had extra time. So, right. Yeah, that's good. And I think that brings us to the finish of our, of our time this morning of the seminar is, 
you know, how do we get back to normal? I think a lot of people are asking that. What What are we doing with church? I got that question this morning, Pastor. What are we doing with church? Are we Are we getting together? Are we not getting together? And when and how and what? And um, I think we just, as we've talked about the gospel, the gospel is the main focus of our hearts and our minds during mm-hmm. these days. I mean. We should have more of God, more of his word, more of his promises, more of more prayer time, more more meditation time. And I think, you know, getting back to normal, let's just I don't you know, if you're talking about normal as no masks, no social distancing, the return of sports, all those things, I just, it's going to be a while. It's going to it's going to be a year or two before things really get back to what we would say quote is normal. So I I think we need to just jettison the ideas that uh, we can just move on unfazed and unchallenged by this time. I think it'd be really foolish to move right back into what we believe is normal for our experience. I don't think that's wise. I think we need to stop. We need to pause. We need to pray. We need to think through these things. And uh, my goodness, if, if you need to wear a mask, wear a mask, you know, like there's, there, these are recommendations. There's, these are things that we need to respect social distancing. And I'm a, I'm a hugger by nature, man. I want to hug people and, and, and love people, but I'm also going to measure out now my focus on the gospel for the love and the care that I have for other people. You know, I'm going to give up some liberties that I might have in Christ uh, so that I can minister to a brother or sister in Christ. I'm going to do that. Um, there's there's no way to just think through, well, I want what I had in 2019 or 2018. I think in your mind you have to think, is that of God or is that of me? Is that desire from God or is that from me? Um, because normal in our world means security. I want security again. I don't like uncertainty. I want security in my relationships and in the economy. I want security in travel. I want to, I want to go on a vacation again. I want security of not having to wear masks when I go to Menards or something. Um, I want the security of future hope. I don't like all the doom and gloom from all the news, news stations. I, I don't, I don't know what else to tell you except that you need to look to something else to find normal, which is God. You need to look to his word, look to Jesus and uh, don't look to this world. Cause if you, if you set your mind on the world, you, your, your head's going to spin because of all the information and you're going to feel so depressed and discouraged because you're, you're reading and following all these human institutions for your hope, which humans are never meant to be that for other people. Yeah. Only God can be like giving you joy and hope for the future. Yeah. Yeah, encouraging one another to, to trust in God, to turn back to him, encouraging each other while it's still today, Hebrews, you yeah. know, and that's encouraging people to God, not just yeah, saying, you know, hey, great work today or a good job or things like that. I mean, it's encouraging people while it's still today to follow after God. Yeah. Um, and yeah, in the rush to get back to normal, don't don't waste what has happened. Don't mm-hmm. waste what is what God has forced you into, but that is... Right. We, as human beings, it's amazing our ability to do that, to find a yeah. new normal that is just like our old normal, just slightly modified. Yes. We're still filling it with yeah. the same wasteful things. It's, it's just a different way. Right. Like, I mean, for me, I sports taken out. There's no sports to watch. I loved watching sports, but it doesn't mean I can fill it with other stuff. Mm-hmm. Some people fill it by watching old sports or fill it by <laughs> playing a sports game. Thank you, YouTube. Yes. You know, and that, that yes. it, it was because it was, yeah. it was what we, it was easy. You find comfort in it and it entertains you and takes your mind off of things. And sometimes God has allowed this. So our minds aren't taken off of things right. so that we actually have to right. think through and evaluate things and not rushing back to fill our minds. So yeah, like not wasting what has happened here, not yep. jumping back into pretending like this never happened is to evaluate what it is and yeah you know as i was thinking through it is just our tendency as humans i remember like a quote from c.s lewis dying it back um you know as we've mentioned him already and it he said when he was writing about people he said and it's a famous quote i probably mentioned before but it would seem that our lord finds our desires are not too strong but too weak we're half-hearted creatures fooling about with drink sex ambition when infinite joy is offered to us 
So we're like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he can't imagine what is meant by an offer for a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. And that's the same thing for, for me. I mean, it's easy to take the immediate joy and the easy, mm-hmm. easy entertainment as opposed to struggling, yeah. wrestling with God, as we've talked about, and not in a bad way, in a seeking to know better, not in a cynical, like, yeah. I'm going to, I dislike, you know, but just walking through and honestly evaluating using this time that, you know, right? I mean, a lot of people have gotten time to spend more time together mm-hmm. as a family, investing in their family, continue, don't, when things open all the way back up, yeah. don't neglect that. Don't go, oh right. yeah, now my kids can go do all this stuff <laughs> apart from me. No, be yeah. involved, can yeah. use this time. Agree. So. Yeah, and and find your security in Jesus. Yeah. I mean, Matthew six thirty four. We're not supposed to worry because Jesus has all these things in His hands. And so, I'm serious for everybody watching. I'm serious. Like you have to find your joy and your foundation in Christ. Life is short. Eternity is on the doorstep. And if we're not taking seriously the fact that our our life is fleeting and vain and short. And if we don't seriously consider the salvation that is offered by Jesus Christ, we're wasting our time because what are you going to do? Spin your life on worldly things? I mean, just keep going. Like the world doesn't have the answers that you need. You're going to fly into eternity. Don't fly into eternity unprepared. If Jesus is really who he says he is, and if he really died on that cross, and if he really rose again, there is a hope and a foundation that you can have right now. And I think anybody that's watching that doesn't know Christ, I would plead with you and I, I'd implore you to trust in Jesus, to surrender your life to him and to be saved for the first time. And if you do know Christ, oh my goodness, build your life on the Savior that you believe in. Don't build your life on all the other stuff. And Christians, I think it's imperative for us to lead the way in prayer. We Christians mm-hmm. need to be leading the way in prayer for our society. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, Paul encouraged Christians to, to lead the way in prayer for public uh, officials, for everybody in society, because Christians ought to be the leaders in the prayer movement for the, for the blessing of their culture, the blessing of their community, the blessing of their town, the blessing of families. So we need to pray for our own attitudes as well, that we don't have stinky, sinful attitudes about everything. We need to pray for our scientists, people who are developing vaccinations right now. We need to be in earnest prayer for those people because we desire things to get back to normal. We do desire that, but we should be leading the way in prayer. And we need to be practicing self-control and wisdom. So... And that's all about social distancing and masks and those things. And, and we need to not freak out on either side. You know, the, the the hyper side that says we don't need this, coronavirus isn't real, all that stuff. And then also the other side that's like we can't do anything until there's a vaccination. I'm like, I I think there's a there's a place in Christianity for self control and wisdom. And we need to by the grace of God strike that balance. So Chad, this was fun, dude. Yeah. Good work, man. This was a lot of fun. Any final thoughts, final word? No, yeah, just, I mean, just echo those same things. It's it's good. Um, and God, the thing that is interesting about this, right, if you have followed Christ for a while, God often brings things into your life that wrecks normal, yep. which has done it to me multiple times. The interesting thing about this time is he's done it to everybody at, yep. at once. Right? Yep. Everybody, I mean, it's not an isolated thing. Everybody yep. is going through some semblance right. of this. Right. And it's an amazing opportunity to turn to God for the first time yep. or return and continue to seek him at a Amen. at a better level so amen yeah that's good well how about you close us up in prayer and then yeah. uh, we'll get out of here all right okay father we thank you for this morning thank you for the opportunity just to discuss father who you are mm-hmm. and lord we don't outside of you we wouldn't even have a an, really an understanding of normal or what normal is lord it's because of your blessing and your gift of life and your gift of your son that we even have an understanding of of life and and of normal scene of just the blessings that you bring each and every day. And so Lord, we just pray this morning that in our, um, Lord, our desire to, to seek normalcy, to seek coming a normal everyday routine, Lord, that we would just continue to find our hope, our joy, our confidence 
in you and you alone and not in the gifts that you give. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would keep us from from making idols out of things that you meant to be blessings. And, Lord, that we would follow you. Lord, and if there is anyone that is listening today that is not yet given their lives over to you, that has not repented of their sin and trusted your Son as Savior, Lord, that today would be the day. And, Lord, we just thank you for who you are. Lord, may we just continue to seek you as we move forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and I hope you have a great day.